Hello. So um, I am unfortunately not being outside. The beautiful sunshine, 74 degrees today. I really want to be, but I can't be right now because I'm laying on my heating pad. I've been on heat for a while today. Pain medicine is not helping. Heat's not helping. So just trying to keep it from getting worse. The back pain. I have lower back pain today of all things. It's just weird. I don't think I've done anything specifically to aggravate it, but I don't know. Sometimes with inflammation, it can like you do something and then you don't feel it right away. And then it, you know, like a day or so later will rise its ugly head and decide that, um, you know, with inflammation buildup, it's anyway. So I was wanting to do bingo today and I'm hoping that maybe by this evening I'll feel better, but I'm not really seeing any improvement. I'm going to try to take a Toradol, which is a really strong anti-inflammatory that generally helps, but that's usually I get relief in my upper back and my neck. Um, when I get like really bad headache from my neck issue, which by the way, I want to say thank you to everybody who prayed for me in getting a specific test done because these specific types of tests, it's like an MRI, but it's the study of the nerves. And I remember a few years ago, I, I had to really wrangle to get this test approved. And with a little bit of wrangling, I was able to get it approved. So my lower back, my nerves are good. So that was good. So then we thought, I haven't, we started looking at my records and I haven't had a follow-up MRI in my thoracic region where I had my double fusion and I've got rods in my upper back. And that can cause a lot of problems with leg weakness as well. Um, it could be fibromyalgia that's causing my leg weakness, but um, I don't know. It just feels like it's something within the spine. So anyways, I'm very thankful that I've got these tests done. Um, I got the MRN, which is, um, basically it's like an MRI, but they look at the nerves that go out from your spinal cord or your spine. And then I had, um, my cervical done. I had a cervical MRI done. And of course I have one disc, one disc left in my spine that doesn't have bulging and pretty much all of them have stenosis, but they're still in the mild stage. I don't have any of my neck that's in the moderate to severe stage. So that's good. But I do have stenosis going on in my neck and multiple discs. But in the portion of the um, test that they did that was the study of the nerves, the brachial plexus, for the most part, it was all normal, except for one thing that the report itself was really vague. It didn't state, it didn't classify it to what type it was. So here's what they found on my brachial plexus is that um, I have a, and I don't even know how to say this word, a pseudo meningocele, pseudo meningocele. <laughs> I'll put it in, in the post or whatever. But basically, I mean, it can be like not severe. It could be just mild. Um, they didn't like give like the size of it. Or the severity, they just said that it was identified pretty vague. Anyways, I guess they'll just leave that up to a specialist to determine, you know, by looking at the images. But the problem is there aren't any surgeons in Oklahoma that even use these tests, right? Like, well, the surgeon that I saw, he doesn't use these tests. Like, he doesn't know how to read them. He, you know, so I don't really know what to do at this point. So I'm asking for prayer to help me get to the right specialist about this particular condition, because it can be like small, it can be something that could resolve on its own, or it could be something that could need urgent, you know, surgical intervention. It could cause serious problems. Um, anyways, so basically it is a, try to read this abnormal collection of cerebral, cerebral spinal fluid that communicates with arachnoid space and the symptoms headache back pain radiculopathy and other array of, of symptoms but headache was the one that was real i kept complaining though i said i have this really bad headache like it's so bad like sometimes 
when it's really, really severe would like maybe throw up. So I take Toradol and it was the absolute only thing that I could get relief. Like there, one t- there was only one time that I had to go ER over it and they put Toradol in my IV. But it was, um, Toradol is just like, you have to take it very sparingly. I wish they could make a Toradol that you could take every day, right? I wouldn't even have to take pain medicine. It was just, Toradol is like the super drug. I mean, because if something that you have is being caused to like some kind of inflammation, I don't know. It just helped. I just know that I get relief when I take Toradol. It's just, it's really strong anti-inflammatory. They generally, they give after surgery and you have to take it very sparingly. So thankfully I'm able to have, you know, that on hand. So I have a prescription that I'll take like when it's, you know, not controlled by anything else. And so anywho's, but today I'm just having this pain in my lower back and oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know what this is, but, um, and any who's, um, I don't really know what to think about this particular, um, thing that I have. So what they did in the test, when they do the cervical MRI and then the brachial plexus are all these bundle of nerves that goes out through your arm. And I would have like my arms would go numb and my hands like texting is really hard on me because of my fingers will go numb. You know, or sometimes if I just lay in a specific position for a long period of time, um, I don't know. It like if that's related or not, it could be just inflammation with the stenosis in my neck. So I do ask for prayer that the disc in my neck that have mild stenosis, um, whatever reason, all of this. All the discs that have stenosis are all, it says more on the right than the left. So some of them I have it on both sides. Some of them it's just on one side. I think there's two discs that don't have the stenosis yet. It has the condition that's pre-stenosis. So anyways, as long as the stenosis stays at the mild level and doesn't progress to moderate, then I think I can avoid surgery. I don't, you know, I'm trying to put that off as long as possible. So, um, anyways, but this, this other thing, pseudo meningeal cell or whatever it's called, just, I, you know, I believe in prayer I had, if you remember back in, I think it was 2019 when I had this mass, I'd gone to this oncologist to remove, I'd like hysterectomy or whatever. When they, when they went in there, they discovered that they had to use a different equipment. So then they, you know, they went in through the belly and they closed me up and said, we're going to take you to another hospital, do this, you know, remove this with different equipment. While they were in there though, they found this mass on my, I don't even know what it was connected to. And so then I had to go to a different surgeon for that one. So I had somebody pray and lay hands on me. And, um, then when they went in there after this mass, it was just gone, (laughs) you know? So, I mean, there's some things that I've had miracle healing from through life, you know, throughout my life. And then some things it's just, you know, it's, um, just keep praying, you know? So I just pray that this, I'm just, first of all, I want to be so thankful that I got this test done because, of all the MRIs they've done on me, they would have never caught this test, but for the MRN, it's basically a nerve study and there are more places. Now, when I had this done back in 2016, um, MRN, I had to travel, you know, to another state. There are very few places, but now, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma has, um, they now have the equipment. And so I'm just so thankful that more places are doing this type of test. And I'm very thankful that my doctor ordered this test because had she not ordered that test, I would not even know about this situation. So I'm probably just, I don't know, I need to get to a specialist who can even know how to deal with this. And um, maybe it's just something that they'll monitor to make sure it doesn't get bigger or more severe or just kind of see. They usually try conservative treatment with it. Um, and it doesn't like, it doesn't classify it. It doesn't say if it's, I think maybe they just didn't know how to, I don't know why they didn't classify it. Like every little detail in the test result, they classify, you know, the, to the severity, you know, the, the mild, moderate, severe or whatever. 
sometimes like I have a bunch of hem hemangiomas in my lower back. And so they kind of monitor that and see if it gets any bigger, compare it to other tests. And, um, but this particular thing definitely is something I'm sure they'll probably be monitoring, but you know, there's just conservative treatment. You may try to just drain the fluid, um, make sure that there are any leak that can go to the brain kind of thing. It can be from what I've read without speaking to the doctor yet. Cause like I just got the reports, um, I mean, it could be, it could have very serious consequences or it could just spontaneously resolve on its own. So I'm praying for a miracle. You guys, I'm asking for prayer to pray that this um, thing will not require any kind of surgery. And, but due to the symptoms that I have that are pretty, they can be severe. They're intermittent though. They're not like constantly. So that's good. Um, but I, I think that that's what it is causing the symptoms. This one surgeon that I saw, he wanted me to have, they were going to like put this needle in the back of my head and give me some kind of injection. And for whatever reason, the appointments never went through. There was a lot of wrangling. I don't know. It's just a lot of chaos with setting that appointment. I'm very thankful. I actually didn't go have that appointment because I think that this is probably the culprit of what's causing it. And, um, Anyways, so thank you all for your prayers, for helping me get these tests done. Please continue to pray. My left hand is going numb right now as I speak. So please pray that whatever this is, that God will um, heal it. And, you know, God is sovereign. And, and he, sometimes when you think about Jesus, when he healed people, he did it in so many different ways. Like, he would touch them or somebody would touch his garment or he would speak it, you know, or then other times they had to go and put some kind of mud on them or something, or they had to go into a bath or just, you know, he's sovereign, you know, so whatever healing process that he chooses and, um, and he was, um, when I had the spine surgery that I did have they say when this specific thing can be caused by it could be a, a consequence of surgery and I did have surgery in my upper back not on my neck though but this is the brachial plexus so generally when they do the kind of surgery that oh, my hands are going up the kind of surgery that I had oh, um they go through the lung they deflate the lung and move it out of the way and they take part of your rib you know it was a very serious surgery and um that's how they access the spine that way but i was very very thankful that i went out to barrel brain and spine in arizona those of you remember that and so they didn't have to go through the lung thank you lord because i have according to these former department of defense radiation doctor specialist or whatever he saw my cat scans on my lungs and he said it wasn't conclusive but he said it looked like what he saw in my lungs was possibly mustard gas ex exposure and i was downwind sarin um i got a letter from the dod on that in the late 90s anywho they have no idea what the consequences of that is i don't care what they say they have no idea there's no specialists or peer review of any ability to even research something like that on what the consequences would be. Anywho, I really did not want them having to go through my lungs, you know, just due to the issues I already have. So I was very thankful that, but they went through the back, through the pedicle bone and, um, just sometimes, well, you know, they put, they took two discs out of my, uh, upper back and put rods and screws in it. And I don't know. They say that sometimes, you know, a traumatic uh, spine surgery like that could cause different types of um, consequences. Um, and I don't just, I just don't know if, if that's something that could have happened during that surgery. Um, I don't know because um, I do know that I didn't have these symptoms, you know, until like, you know, I went to war or whatever. So this is, um, 
but I've never had, I don't remember when I had the MRN done years ago, if they did my brachial plexus as well. I think if that was my lower back. I don't remember. I'll have to go and research so that they can compare to see that I did not have this in my brachial plexus then. Any who's. So, um, just for people to be aware of this type of MRI, if you have spine problems, um, you may want to consider that if tests are not showing what's causing something, you know, to give a nerve study MRI, basically. And it has to say, like, if you get it on your lower back, then it's um, lumbar, I think it's lumbar plexus. Anyways, but um, these type of tests are available and they do show things that regular MRIs nor CAT scans can show. So, anywho, thank you all very much for your prayers for me through the years, you know, dealing with this spine disease. Thank you so much. And please pray that um, I can get to the right specialist to deal with this thing that I have in my brachial plexus and um, pray for healing of it, that God can just heal it like he did that mass in my organs. And um, yeah, so, and then of course, for my the legal stuff that I've got going on, I need prayer for that. Um, Anywho, you all have a blessed weekend, and I hope that I can get this ugh, lower back pain down so I can go out and enjoy some sunshine. But I hope that you are enjoying the sun, the sunshine that we have. You know, if you're here locally in Oklahoma, it's beautiful outside. Go out and enjoy it if you can, and have a blessed one for the rest of your weekend. Bye.